Well, as we told you last night, State University System Chancellor Bill Getz has asked Dickinson State University President Richard McCallum to resign. A report shows that about 180 people were falsely registered as DSU students. Brian Hall joins us with more. Brian? Alan, the issue came to light when people who weren't students questioned the university system about why they were being surveyed for report and for DSU students. Dr. Richard McCallum took the helm at DSU about three and a half years ago. Now, the head of North Dakota's university system wants him out. Chancellor Bill Getz says he's disappointed that McCallum chose to fudge enrollment numbers. The circumstance uh, that arises in a situation like this is one where you become very uh, deliberate and strategic in terms of the uh, institution, uh, the university, uh, certainly uh, public perception, uh, credibility of the institution credibility of the university system is very much at stake. The higher ed community's relationship with state lawmakers has been a bit strained recently, but legislative leaders say this particular issue is for the higher ed community to deal with, and it appears they're doing a good job. Lawmakers aren't saying too much about the subject, but they do say that it is a symbol of something bigger. You're trying to light on how you uh, how you deal with funding of higher education and, and and uh, it needs to be a whole different model. That model, Carlson says, will help lawmakers get an accurate read of how many students are in campus, online, and so forth. We're going to develop a new funding mechanism for higher ed so we no longer have all the equity problems that we've had in the past. We're also going to look very seriously at what is a student. Get says DSU will get through this ordeal. Sometimes these instances, the, 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 these cases bring about uh, a situation where we are in the end able to improve upon many situations, we strengthen, we grow stronger because of the event. Get says McCallum hasn't responded to his office yet about the call for his resignation, nor has he returned calls from us. If McCallum doesn't resign, he could be fired. Monica? Thanks a lot, Brian. Well, students have started to arrive at DSU for the school year, and despite the administrative shakeup, faculty members say not much will change on campus. Jeremiah McDaniel talked with some of them. No, I found it a, a, a huge shock. That's how the now interim director of university relations took the news that the DSU president had altered enrollment numbers. There were many significant accomplishments that uh, occurred during Dr. McCallum's term of office, and uh, I appreciate that work. I think that uh, uh, the situation currently is, uh, uh, as I said, shocking, troubling. One of the most surprising things to Hot was how many students were supposedly enrolled. The numbers, um, well, uh, those were far higher than I think any of us expected them to be. Um, but I certainly can't speculate as to why or by whom those mistakes occurred. Despite the shakeup, students shouldn't be affected. It has little to no impact on our programs and our services that we provide for students. We will continue to operate normally, business as usual. In Dickinson, Jeremiah McDaniel, NBC North Dakota News. Other staff members said that even though the news came as a surprise, they did get an inkling of what was coming months earlier. DSU's State of the University address, which had been scheduled for Wednesday, has now been canceled. August 8, 2011. While Dickinson State University President Richard McCallum has essentially been fired, the state university system notified McCallum by letter over the weekend. He is suspended until final action is taken. But McCallum doesn't appear to willing to go down without a fight. Brian Howell reports. An audit shows Dr. Richard McCallum inflated student enrollment numbers. University System Chancellor Bill Getz said last week that he asked Dickinson State University's president to resign. This is always a very difficult thing when, when you're in a position like this, when you have to uh, carry out the, uh, the actions that uh, are being carried out. Uh, disappointment, absolutely. Um, uh, I have... Uh, high expectations of our presidents. But Getz says McCallum didn't respond as instructed. McCallum issued a statement this weekend saying he would not resign. So a termination notice was delivered to McCallum on Sunday. Getz says he met with McCallum briefly Monday morning and he turned in his state laptop, campus keys, cell phone, and business credit card. 
McCallum has until Thursday to request a pre-termination review from Getz. McCallum declined comment, but his attorney says that he will appeal the notice of intent to terminate. He also says that the internal review report cited as the basis for Getz's decision does not contain any findings that would support a request for Dr. McCallum's resignation, let alone his termination. DSU's former university relations director, Constance Walter, says she quit her job because she couldn't support the administration anymore. Dr. McCallum's leadership was more focused on making sure that, that there were things done to make him look good and others at the top. So the, the focus was not on doing what was best for the university. Getz says he believes this is an isolated incident. We did a survey of all of the other institutions and uh, have been assured that enrollment reporting is, is following policy. And uh, it's my hope that we do not have any other uh, situations that may exist. And uh, certainly, uh, I think the signal has been sent that we better not have. McCallum's attorney says his client is extremely disappointed with the manner in which the issue has been handled. He says he feels blindsided in, and is at a loss to understand why it happened. Printed page doesn't have a video on there. I'm going to read it. <clears throat> it says the suspended president of Dickinson State University says he wants an evidentiary hearing. Richard McCallum also sent a letter to DSU faculty and staff in which he says he has no intention of resigning and will continue to perform his responsibilities as president of the, to the extent that he is permitted. McCallum was suspended after University System Chancellor Bill Guest notified him that he will be fired for inflating student enrollment numbers. McCallum's attorney says a letter was sent to Getz today on McCallum's behalf. State Board of Higher Ed uh, President Grant Schaff said this would be considered Dr. McCallum's response to his notice of intent to terminate that he received from the Chancellor. In accordance with this, the Board will proceed to set up an evidentiary hearing. goes on to say, McCallum handed in his keys and other items earlier this week and has been instructed to stay out of the office or all other DSU buildings except for the president's home where he still lives. Brian Howell will have more on this story on the night report. Entitled, New Details Emerge About the DSU Scandal. New details are emerging about the Dickinson State University student enrollment scandal, which might cost the school's suspended president his job, and the ramifications might spread past the DSU campus. Brian Howell joins us for more on that. Brian. Alan, DSU faculty and staff, past and present, aren't saying much publicly because they're scared, but a representative from their union is speaking up. According to the union, which represents college and university employees, DSU faculty began considering a vote of no confidence to President McCallum back in October, but the union's executive director says that effort stalled. The chancellor contacted the um, president of the faculty senate and asked him uh, to consider or asked if he might consider postponing the vote of no confidence until after the legislative session because higher ed's higher ed budget stood very much in the, in the balance. The union says that a large group of DSU faculty hoped that McCallum's contract wouldn't be renewed. Sources tell NBC North Dakota News that Chancellor Getz was well aware that there were issues on the campus of Dickinson State University before a meeting of the State Board of Higher Ed in June where college presidents throughout the state received pay increases, including President McCallum, who also got a contract extension. Some higher ed board members say they weren't aware of problems at the time of the June 16th meeting when McCallum received a 2% salary increase. And if Getz did in fact know about them, that could be a problem. Any time something happens at a school that you don't know about and should know about, it's troubling. There's a lack of, of communication or something. According to Board President Grant Shaft, only the board's leadership, primarily himself, Getz, and board member Dwayne Espigar, knew that an investigation was taking place at DSU during the time of the meeting. In my view and in the board's view, it wouldn't have been prudent to uh, make any salary or contract uh, changes at that point in time. Uh, he did receive one of the lower percentage increases based on, on a performance evaluation, and the contract extension that he did receive was more limited uh, 
than the other president. Getz was unavailable for comment, but a spokesperson for the chancellor says an appropriate and responsible review of the DSU situation has been conducted and a process is underway. Now, State Board of Higher Ed uh, President uh, Grant Shaft, as well as the spokesperson for Chancellor Getz, both say it's very important to note that none of the study's findings were, it was not complete at the time of the June meeting. Alan, back to you. All right, All right thanks, Brian. 8 11 2011. I'm telling you about the State University System Chancellor terminating Dickinson State University President Richard McCallum over inflated student enrollment numbers. Numerous sources have been telling us that problems at the school go far beyond that. Yesterday, we learned that DSU's athletic department is under investigation. Political reporter Brian Howell has come across some information which, if proven true, could be very damaging for the school. He obtained one internal DSU document today with an open public records request, but lawyers for the state university system aren't willing to release the others he requested. He joins us now for more on that. Brian? Alan, university system lawyers allowed DSU officials to release this memo to me dated December 15, 2010. It was sent to the school's vice president for student development from a school staffer who sent a few student athletes who visit an office on campus to find out why cash scholarship payments to cover housing had stopped after their volleyball coach Ryan Platt was fired. The memo goes on to say that DSU staffers were surprised and confused because it was highly irregular and possibly illegal. The memo says the student athletes were then sent to see Tim Daniels, the school's athletic director. The staffer says this is the first time anyone knew of the cash payments to students and then says that Daniels said the fire coach had been advised the student athletes to transfer out. But so far, one of them was enrolled in the spring 2011 semester. Other documents that were requested, sources tell me, show that high-ranking school officials approved additional scholarship dollars to go to the student athletes. They say school officials should have conducted an investigation into whether this really happened and notified the NAIA. Lawyers for the university system acknowledge that the other documents I requested exist, but they tell me that they won't release them because student names and other information is on them, and there's an ongoing investigation. But the memo I received with the lawyer's approval also contains student names, which were blacked out before it was sent to me. An attorney for NBC North Dakota News is trying to get the requested documents released. Alan? All right, thanks for that report, Brian. And as you can see here, it shows the letter... That's right, the letter I received through an op uh, open public records request, um, which I have on copy. So that's the U.S. Department of Education letter um, that we received and put right up on the website there on August 15th. We're learning more about the investigation into wrongdoing by the administration at Dickinson State University. The school's president was told he would be fired for inflating student enrollment numbers. Chancellor Bill Getz is using an internal university system audit as the basis for deciding to push Richard McCallum out. Brian Howell joins us now with the latest developments. Brian? Monica, in addition to the student enrollment numbers issues that we just spoke about previously, also some cash payments to student athletes are becoming a major issue as well. Sources familiar with the inner workings of Dickinson State University are now coming forward, telling NBC North Dakota News what they know. One of them agreed to talk publicly only if their identity is concealed. The problems are very, very deep. NBC North Dakota News obtained an internal DSU memo last Thursday through an open public records request, which reveals that student athletes might have been receiving cash payments from their volleyball coach. That would be a violation of NAIA and, and, of course, DAC rules also. DSU is currently in the DAC Athletic Conference, whose governing body is the NAIA. NAIA rules would have required DSU to report the cash payment allegation to the NAIA if an internal school investigation was conducted. But apparently school officials chose not to conduct one because of a lack of evidence. That's a big problem to me and to many others. It's up to the institution to determine whether or not they want to investigate allegations. I'm not going to judge whether it's right or wrong, but it is their right to handle it the way they did. We've just obtained internal documents which might reveal even more problems for the university. We'll have more on that tonight. Alan? All right, thanks, Brian. This issue certainly raises some ethical questions, but new information today reveals there might be a whole lot more to the story and much bigger problems for Dickinson State University. Brian Howell has been following the story and has more. Brian? 
Monica, sources familiar with the inner workings of President McCallum's administration say he was made aware of the cash payment allegation. Sources familiar with the inner workings of President McCallum's administration say he was made aware of the cash payment allegation. The matter was turned over to the president, and that the president then uh, gave a directive to give these students additional scholarships to cover their costs. That alleged decision by McCallum could be a costly one for the university. The uh, purpose of the fund is very clear as to its intent. Documents obtained Monday through open public records requests reveal a signature which appears to be McCallum's, approving the Rough Rider Award scholarships to some of the student athletes. There was concern about where the money was going to be. Scholarship fund at that time didn't have much left in it. And um, because there's a there's a, a finite amount of scholarship dollars that the university can give out every year. And so when you make a decision to uh, give additional funding or scholarship money to students, it's if it's not there, the money has to come from somewhere. Whether it's depleted and conclusions about funds being taken out of there and used for other purposes, I can't I can't truthfully answer that because I don't have the information at this point. Internal DSU documents show that Rough Rider scholarships can exceed a thousand dollars. Yet two of the student athletes apparently were approved to receive more than that in addition to a full international scholarship they were already receiving. He chose to um, give the money anyway, and these people were directed to find the money. Legislators say oil revenues used to fund the scholarships were depleted, so state lawmakers approved one-time payments to replenish the fund, totaling about $500,000 during the past two legislative sessions, and some lawmakers are concerned that this state money may have been misused. Political pressure has been mounting for Getz to back off the current investigation into the school. That's exactly why I'm asking the uh, state auditor's office to get involved. Take a little back off approach, let them take it. That's where it belongs. I just hope that whatever happens helps move the university forward. Getz says a very thorough investigation is necessary. Alan? All right, thanks, Brian. In another twist, University System Chancellor Bill Getz confirms that DSU campus police caught individuals attempting to take a laptop from the president's office the night before McCallum had to drop off his computer, keys, and other items to Getz last week. But Getz says it's all a misunderstanding. Brian Howell has more. A source speaking on condition of anonymity says a few individuals were caught carrying a laptop and what might have been papers on Sunday, August 9th in the president's office. Chancellor Bill Getz acknowledges that the incident did happen. The uh, computer and uh, needed to be back in my office by Monday. And so because the president was prohibited from entering the building and conducting any business on behalf of the university, uh, he, there was another individual who then went to the office to pick up the computer and uh, making certain that it was in my office uh, that morning. But the source says the man who oversees campus security, DSU's VP for Student Development, Hal Haynes, wasn't told that anyone would be dropping by the president's office that night, so campus police detained the individuals. Getz says there is an explanation. I'm not sure just what the campus policy is and uh, uh, what uh, <clears throat> Mr. Haynes, who is the uh, student affairs uh, Vice President, I believe, is his title. Uh, just what the policy is in terms of reporting uh, and when uh, such reports need to be made prior to an entry into an office. That is something that, uh, again, we'll continue to review. Getz says he was notified and immediately dispatched the university system's internal auditor to question the individuals and make a determination. And Getz says he received a report. The president's office locks were changed, and Getz instructed that the new key be given to Alvin Binstock, DSU's vice president for business affairs. When asked whether any important information was compromised, Getz had this to say. That is, uh, again, something that uh, I've not received a final report on, and uh, certainly very much aware, and uh, uh, really I just can't comment on anything further than that at this point. 
Our political reporter, Brian Howell, submitted an open public records request for the incident report this past Saturday night. None of the requested documents pertaining to the night in question have been released yet. 8, 16, 2011. The community is watching the developing situation at Dickinson State University very closely. But legislative leaders are unusually silent and cautious about what they say. Brian Howell reports. Legislative leaders say they are concerned about what they've been hearing about Dickinson State University and what it might mean for the State Board of Higher Education. It seems to be an ongoing uh, thing with the Board of Higher Education. It gets to be disappointing, but uh, I think my biggest concern is uh, the amount of trust that the Board of Higher, Higher Education really needs to have among with the people, and this just continually uh, challenges that trust. I'm a little surprised and concerned that... Uh, the Board of Higher Education has this happening again, the kind of mirroring uh, some of the things that happened at uh, North Dakota State University in the Chapman uh, presidency. But some of higher ed's biggest critics are surprisingly quiet. The burden falls upon the higher ed to clean this up and then explain to us as legislators what happens before we go into the next session. The university system has turned over the investigation to the state auditor's office because of mounting pressure. The legislative leaders say it's too early to cast judgment. We need to find out uh, what exactly happened and, and who knew what and and, uh, and where culpability is and and, uh, and 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 then make decisions at that point. And if the findings aren't favorable to higher ed, people are are going to say, you know, uh, we've given them a lot of latitude, uh, given them a lot of trust. Um, maybe we're going to have to watch them a little closer. This is certainly going to put a lot of gas on the discussion and. Uh, you know, it's, it's a matter of uh, what the majority of 141 legislators want. Uh, you know, this isn't going to help the discussions that we've been dealing with in the last few sessions. Surely to say, maybe that bill of mine will come back. You never know. Legislative leaders from both parties say they're confident that the state auditor's office will conduct a fair, thorough, and accurate investigation. 8 11 2011 University System Chancellor Bill Getz said that the investigation into alleged wrongdoings at Dickinson State University will be turned over to the State Auditor's Office. The change in direction came after mounting pressure from the political community. The transfer appears to be moving along. This is changing. More and more, the elderly... As of right now, um, we've had a couple discussions with the Chancellor's Office. We have a very positive working relationship with his office and, and with Bill. And um, we would request, typically, that we get something in writing asking us to conduct an audit of the issues that they're facing. Um, we haven't received that yet. Uh, I'm speculating, but I would expect that we will receive it um, based on my discussions. The state auditor could consider a variety of options. Some factors include a timeline for the audit's completion and staff availability. Well, with so much focus on administrative wrongdoings at Dickinson State University, the Board of Higher Education is trying to return the school to a sense of normalcy. Jeremiah McDaniel talked with the newly appointed president who just took the reins today. As students prepare for the first day of classes, a new acting president is taking over. D.C. Costin, NDSU's vice president of agriculture, took the position and wants to put the focus back on students. My main focus is knowing that we have young men and women that we're preparing for their futures and that's where our emphasis will be. The new president just got into town last night and says unfamiliarity with the university will be his greatest obstacle. The biggest challenges for me are getting to know the people here and, and for them to get to know me. Costin has a lot to do and little time to do it. It's a little early, but uh, fairly soon we'll be, uh, we'll be working with the, uh, the people within the university, the people that believe in and support this university, and, and soon we'll be, uh, we'll be beginning to talk about uh, the future of uh, Dickinson State. Costin doesn't plan to be at DSU too long. It's a temporary position and a permanent president will be chosen in about a year. In Dickinson, Jeremiah McDaniel, NBC North Dakota News. Costin will be acting president until Richard McCallum is officially fired and then he will become interim president. The enrollment fiasco at Dickinson State University isn't over yet and that's a concern among some lawmakers who vote on funding for the university system. Newly released documents show that DSU's enrollment numbers are inflated even more than originally reported. Brian Howell is here with more. Brian? Monica, that's right. This new open public records request shows that DSU's enrollment count could be off by an additional 40 students because high school students were apparently offered sophomore level college credit classes 
and then counted as college students. It also appears that the high school students didn't have to pay anything to receive the college credits. This email from DSU's Director of Enrollment Services to the school's president in September of last year states, to enhance Dickinson State headcount, these students would enroll for undergraduate credit. Those students appear to be high school sophomores, juniors, and seniors, not college students. In a telephone interview last month, the man who wrote the email defended the practice because it was a history symposium about Theodore Roosevelt. In this case of point, yes, that was very appropriate, and it actually does align with uh, what our standard practice has been. Some lawmakers aren't so sure. If the goal is transparency, it's not just clean everything up and then it start being transparent at a future date and time. We need to be transparent right now, and again, I'd encourage them to be as transparent as they can possibly be today. The state auditor's office is auditing DSU and won't comment until it's completed. But State Senator Dwight Cook says DSU's fuzzy map is a concern, and he's also worried that this type of enrollment enhancement might be practiced at other North Dakota universities. It's troubling times. Yes, it is. The last time a university's enrollment claims were verified was at UND in the late 1990s. Whoever has done wrong should be uh, taken care of. Ultimately, it's going to come to the legislature. Uh, you know, the, any audits that are done, they go before the Legislative Audit and Review Committee. Uh, they got to answer to the legislature. So uh, the buck stops with the legislature as far as I'm concerned. No deadline has been set for the audit of DSU's enrollment practices, but it could take three to nine months. While we await the results of the audit, one thing has become clear. Members of the state university system and higher ed board have been advised not to talk with the media and have declined to answer our questions. Where's the audio? We have a, we have a new document, internal document. Could we just get a quick response? You don't have any credibility with us anymore, so we don't talk to you. Based upon the ongoing audit, it appears that it's DSU's enrollment numbers that are not credible. Alan? Thanks, Brian.